Hi, TJ Mayers. I'm Rick and I'm going to teach you something about biology. If you happen to be a STEM student or a student who wants to take on the challenge of STEM strand or you just happen to be interested in biology or maybe you just want to have a quick review about biology, this video is for you. This is cell. And every living organism started with a single cell that mutated over the course of billions of years resulted to a different kinds of species. Such as our cat. And our dog. Including me. Flexing my capability of doing diamond push-ups using my muscle that are also made up of millions of millions of cells. You may be wondering, why do we need to learn about these things and what's so important about them anyway? Well, studying cells helps us understand how organism functions, know more about of their characteristics, how do they simply multiply, or their functions, and many more. Without understanding the function of the basic unit of life, we might still be believing that sickness was caused by some sort of evil spirit. Or, we could be suffering from an illness just like COVID-19 without even knowing that it was indeed a COVID-19. Do you understand now? There are three concepts we need to know about cell. First, cells are the basic unit of life. Second, all organisms are made out of cells. Third, all cells are made up from pre-existing cells. These concepts are known as the cell theory. Learning something about cell theory is not very complicated, but it is very essential. My advice to you is, if you really want to understand the subject matter that you are studying, you need to know first what's beneath on that lesson in order for you to understand. On this video, or on this case, in order for us to understand how did they come up with a concept concerning about cell, we need to discuss first about its history. Discovering the cell was made possible when a father and son Dutch inventor named Zacharias Jensen and his father started experimenting on their lenses sometime during 1590s and was able to develop the first compound microscope in 1600 with a maximum magnification of 30 times capable of seeing small organism. You know, this innovation paved way to the evolution of microscope technology and become an important tool for the scientists in order for them to visualize, define, and characterize what they are trying to hypothesize that greatly contributes to the modern subjects that we have today, such as biology, cell biology, microbiology, or even in the study of physiology, human disease, ev evolution of ancestry, and many more. Okay, I'm telling you so much. On the same century, an English scientist named Robert Hooke, who is part of a royal society, studied philosophy and became interested in studying multiple disciplines of science. He really shines the most when he first discovered and coined the term cell in 1665. Using a microscope, he remarked that it looks strangely similar to a cellula or small rooms which monks inhabited. What Hooke actually saw was a dead cell walls of a plant cells from a cork of an oak bark tree as it appeared under the microscope. This discovery was written and published in Micrographia. Not so later in 16th century, another Dutch scientist named Anton van Leeuwenhoek created a more advanced microscope with a maximum magnification of 300, which by the way looked like this. Having two of them combined together, it will look like sunglasses. Lewinuk discovered these materials while viewing scrapings from his teeth and teeth of others and call it animalcule. We call animalcule in modern biology as protozoa or commonly termed as bacteria. He also discovered red blood cell and was the first person to see a living sperm cell in animals. Which he hypothesized that maybe cell comes from pre-existing cell. However, this was not widely accepted in 16th century because most of the scientists believe on spontaneous generation, the hypothetical process by which living organisms develop from a non-living matter. In short, what they are trying to suggest, that cell pops out of nowhere, 
or spontaneously appear to multiply. Fast forward in 1800, this is the time where cell theory was finally formulated thanks to two German scientists named Theodor Schwann and Matthias Jacob Schleiden. And of course, with the help of other German scientists that contributes in formulating the concept in cell theory, which by the way, I will only be mentioning two of them later on. Theodor Schwann, who is a zoologist, believed that all animals are made up of cells, and thus making cells as the basic unit of animals. On the other side of the Germany, a botanist named Matthias Jacob Schleiden believes that all plants are made up of cells, hence making cells as a basic unit of plants. This resulted to the formulation of two concepts in cell theory. First, all organisms are made up of cells. Second, cell is the basic unit of life. Now, there's a little dispute on the third concept of cell theory. Theodor Schwann basically believed that cell comes from pre-existing cell, while Matthias Schleiden believed on the old norms of spontaneous generation where cell crystallized out of nowhere, creating a cell. And even though Dr. Rudolf Virchow, which by the way is the father of pathology, supported the claims of Theodor Schwann, there was actually no evidence to support their claims. Not until Louis Pasteur saved the day by providing them evidences. Louis Pasteur is widely known for his pasteurization, a process of sterilizing a product, such as milk and wine, so it won't get spoiled and be preserved for a long period of time. He came up with an idea of boiling a broth, a substance that is rich in nutrients and protein, which is being used to culture bacteria. By using his one neck flask experiment, he provided an evidence that cells was able to multiply from an already existing cells after boiling the broth, thus making the third concept of cell theory that all cells are made of pre-existing cells, making it universally accepted by most of the scientists, and thus making Theodor Schwann as the founder of cell theory. Of course, there's still some scientists who believe on spontaneous generation. And what's good about the cell theory is it is still evolving. In fact, in modern biology, there are a new list of cell theory, and I will be putting them here on screen. Scientists now understand that there are billions of cells working together in every sort of activities, that there are energy flow occurs within our cell that is needed in every activities done by the cells that cells contains DNA information passed down to the next generation of cells and all cells in similar species of the same composition. Now, let's have a quick recap. The first person who invented the first compound microscope was Zacharias Jensen and was used by Robert Hooke who then discovered and coined the term cell. Later on in 1600, Anton van Leeuwenhoek created a more advanced microscope, making him the first person to view protozoa, which he named animalcule. In 1800, there are two German scientists greatly contributed in formulating the cell theory. First is Theodor Schwann, who is a zoologist believed that all animals are made up of cells, concluding that cell is the basic unit of animals, and he is also the founder of cell theory. Next is Matthias Schleiden, a botanist who believes that all plants are made up of cells, concluding that cell is the basic unit of plants. The next German scientist is Rudolf Virchow, who is the father of pathology, supported the idea of Theodor Schwann that cells came from pre-existing cells. And the last German scientist that we have mentioned was Louis Pasteur, known for his pasteurization, a process of sterilizing a product. He conducted an experiment by boiling a broth through a swan neck flask experiment to provide evidences that cell is made up from pre-existing cell, and this idea resulted to what you call cell theory. There are three concepts to your cell theory. First, cell is the basic unit of life. Second, all organisms are made up of cells. Third, all cells are made up from pre-existing cells. 
is all for today and I hope you learned something about this video. And by the way, support this channel by clicking that subscribe button and notification logo down below so you will get notified once we uploaded new videos for your learning. And we know for sure that you are sharing this video. Right? Right? Again, this is Rick, one of the teachers of Die Covenant Montessori. Study hard and study smart. God bless. Until next time.